Hey you guys, it's me, Aunt Shelly, and we're back for book number seven. Today is Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. So one of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I love this story. So um, yeah, we have two, actually three, technically three guest listeners today. So uh, let's see who they are. Hi, Uncle Andy. Hi, Roxy. Do you want to hear a story too? Oh, you like to sleep. You want to hear a story? Yeah? Okay. Okay, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting how many pancakes we could eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling. And landed right on Henry. <laughs> he has a pancake on his head. After we realized the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully, and all other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. There they are, enjoying their pancake breakfast on that Saturday morning. That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best bed tale, or sorry, best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. So there's Grandpa telling them the story, and now we drift off to the town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like other tiny towns. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. So there were cats and dogs like Mila and Binks and Callie and Sammy and Leo, and Roxy, and Aria, and Bobo, and Mama Kitty. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. What? They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day. At breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Well, that seems crazy, doesn't it? Could you imagine getting your meals from the sky? Let's see what that looked like. Whatever the weather served was what they ate, but it never rained rain, and it never snowed snow. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes, yum, and snow, and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in giant storms of hamburgers. I think I could go for a hamburger storm. How about you guys? Mm -hmm. The people would watch the weather report on television in the morning and they would even hear a prediction about the next day's food. So isn't that silly? The way that we listen to find out what kind of weather we're going to have, if it's going to be sunny or cloudy. They listen to hear what they're going to eat. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way, they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerator in case they got hungry between meals. So here's a guy, he's in traffic, and this guy's catching soup with his umbrella. We have football players, and this lady is hurrying to get a chicken leg. The menu 
varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, Frankfurters, already in their roll, blew in from the northwest at about five miles per hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off their meal. So look at this restaurant. It doesn't have a ceiling or a roof because the food just comes straight in. And this guy's made his way. He's jumped right over their table. <laughs> Silly. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. So there's the, the jello at sunset. The sanitation department for Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. They had to remove the food that fell onto the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed it to the cats and dogs. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. That sounds like a good plan. Look at those hungry dogs and cats. They were waiting for their dinner. <clears throat> Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worst. Bum, bum, bum. Spaghetti ties up town. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli all overcooked. Ew. And the next day, there were Brussels sprout sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day, there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of their meal because they were stuck in the fog. This doesn't sound good. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One day, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than anyone had ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight, so they had to close the school. That is crazy. Look how big that pancake is. Lunch one day brought in 15 drip, fifteen inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind followed by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. That doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there was no more school for the children. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. Look at those donuts. That looks tasty. And the pizza, yeah. hamburgers. There we go. Giant hamburgers. Everybody's house is getting destroyed. 
Oh, there's like an ice cream storm. I wouldn't mind an ice cream storm. I really like ice cream. People glued together giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style, with peanut butter, took the absolute necessities with them, and set sail on their rafts for a new land. So here we go. There they are, they have their pizza and cheese for the sails. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses out of it. So they made it to land and built some new houses. The children began school again and the adults all tried to find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had was getting used to buying food at a supermarket. They found it odd that food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked had to be kept in a large refrigerator. Nothing came down the sky from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to chew and swallow to find out what happened. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I even remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning we woke up to see snow falling out of our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sledding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top and we could almost smell the mashed potatoes. It's Grandpa up there. It's a little little fuzzy, a little dark. I kinda, kinda lost track of time today and did it later than usual. So the end, the end. All right, you guys. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs as much as I do. Um, I love you all very, very much, and I can't wait to see you someday soon. And um, I look forward to reading with you again tomorrow, okay? So have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night.